Hey there, this is Chris Abraham. Welcome to Chris Cast Season 2, Episode um, 28. My name is Chris Abraham, as I just said, and here's the next episode. In the background, since I'm again at Walter Reed Recreation Park, um, you will hear two things. You will hear the uh, incredibly loud on this microphone uh, cicadas singing and dancing in the background, and you'll also hear the the of pickleball. For those of you who don't know. Actually, I can't give you a real good explanation for pickleball, so let me ask, let me ask uh, Google. Let us see here. Okay, Google. What is pickleball? According to Wikipedia, pickleball is a paddleball sport that combines elements of badminton, table tennis, and tennis. Two or four players use solid paddles made of wood or composite materials to hit a perforated polymer ball, much like a wiffle ball, with 26 to 40 round holes over a net. The sport shares features of other racket sports, the dimension and layout of a badminton court uh, and a net and rules somewhat similar to tennis with several modifications. It is taken uh, Northern Virginia by storm and the same sort of person who drives Volvos or old 300D Mercedes or Range Rovers or maybe a Porsche uh, the people who holiday at Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket are the sorts of people who play it. And they play it in um, tennis caps, they play it in bucket hats, they play it in sun hats, they wear New Balance shoes, they uh, wear fanny bags, they wear uh, t-shirts and collared shirts, and um, and they're various and sundry, probably... Real Polytechnics uh, from uh, DC's uh, retired political community. So they're probably all spooks. So that's going on in the background, but in the foreground, I am sitting here uh, procrastinating. Uh, when I should be swinging kettlebells, I will do that right after this short episode. Uh, and I don't even remember what this episode is about. Ah. Um, it is about taking my kettlebell for a walk. Did I even make an episode about that? I don't think so. Let me make sure because they sort of all, uh, they sort of all kind of go into one. Okay, so this, um, so it's been a long time in coming, but what a lot of it has to do with is building boundaries. Um, so here's how my life is right now. I live alone in a small little apartment. I go to sleep at around 9 o'clock in the evening, um, between 8 and 9, depending. I like working from noon until 8. Those are my 8 hours of work. So I've blocked off 7.30 in the morning till noon in order to do whatever the heck I want. That doesn't preclude me from checking email making phone calls, jumping on calls, etc. But it does preclude me from carrying my laptop. That is until I get myself my, uh, my really cool Chinese laptop that's the size of, it's small enough to fit in my Hill, 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 Hill People's Gear um, kit bag, chest, chest rig. But until then, I am only with phone. And, oh, remind me, guys, that since I am carrying a bag, I can bring my charger with me. Anyway, so for 7 30, 8 30, 9 30, 10 30, So for like five and a half hours, I will be without my laptop. And what I'll be carrying is a tan colored used donkey bag 
which is a camera bag called the model F8, F-8, and it is in uh, dark khaki canvas, and it's used off of eBay, and to that I've added a, uh, a mail carrier uh, pad, which is also a Domkey product that Velcros right onto the non-slip strap, and in that bag, I have a 12 kilogram kettlebell, but that can easily take a 24 kilogram kettlebell when I get massive strong. And it carries a set of TRX straps. It carries a thousand milliliter slash 32 ounce Nalgene bottle right here. It carries my uh, recorder which I'm talking into right now. It carries, um, usually carries a towel, but I forgot to bring the towel. Um, the towel I need to replace with the clean one. It was uh, sopping sweat. I also wear uh, an appalling bright green uh, bucket hat. I wear a runner's Hill People Gear uh, kit bag made out of ripstop charcoal gray nylon um, and uh, that's it and right now 12 kilograms weighs exactly hey Google how much is 12 kilograms in pounds 12 kilograms is equivalent to 26.455 pounds hey Google how many uh, stone is twin is uh, 12 kilograms? I found these results. Hey Google, how many British stone is 12 kilograms? 12 kilograms is equivalent to 1.89 stone. All right, so that's not that heavy, but it's heavier than most ruckers carry on a daily basis, which is 20... 20 pounds and uh, I carry it across my shoulders like a mail carrier like a bike carrier and it uh, it settles right at my lower back and I find that incredibly comfortable with the with the pad and so what I do is I is I carry it around I call it taking my kettlebell for a walk because I don't have a dog uh, workout and I'll be right back after the advertisement in the break to talk more about this about my whole strategy of life um, until maybe it gets too cold out? I don't know. Oh, and I forgot to mention that in the four pocket, there is uh, half a bag of, of chalk, of magnesium uh, workout grip chalk. So it's right, it's sitting right there so I can use that little pocket, that big pocket with the snap as a place to dip my hands if they get sweaty. And I like using chalk with kettlebells anyway. It'll really make a difference when the weight goes up to 16, 20, and 24 kilograms. But for now, I just wanted everything in its place and I wanted to sort of get used to it. So right now it's sort of a uh, shake, shake out, shakedown. And, um, but like I said, it's not going to be strict. I do have the time blocked off. Maybe I won't. I just want to train my business partner as to that use of space and that I will be away during those times. And, and, and not only him, I'm training myself. So right now it's like an out of office thing, but uh, as soon I'm just gonna make it into, uh, I can take you know business calls, I can talk to my business partner, I can get him started for the day, and then I can be the second shift, which starts at noon and goes to eight. So, and by, by spending five and a half hours in the morning, enjoying myself, getting exercise, being outside, getting some sun, getting some fresh breath, getting some exercise and flexibility and socializing with people, then I won't resent a hard eight hours of work, right? So it's for mental health and for things like this, um, for giving some time to maintaining a podcast or maybe uh, on a day when I don't feel like carrying the entire weight I will just um, carry the um, I have a uh, I have a uh, go ruck bullet 10 liter backpack that I can 
put a 20 pound or 30 pound um, plate in and then I can use that uh, and I can carry my uh, Astro House free write with me and I can go and I can do writing out and about instead of carrying the kettlebell but five and a half hours um, flexible time is going to be kind of what I'm going to try to do in terms of boundaries uh, so that I can move forward and stop being so resentful it'll feel more like uh, semi-retirement than uh, being a, a slave at 51 so um, I have a little bit of a problem with uh, that kind of thing. I'll talk about it more in a second. Hey there, welcome back. This is Chris Cast, Season 2, Episode 28. Um, Van Wheat, Van Wheat, Van Wheat. Um, and I'm talking about uh, this whole lifestyle thing. So, while it is me carrying a kettlebell in a camera bag, uh, which is a combination of walking, rucking, socializing, being outside and recreating it's not a forced march uh, there's no level of intensity um, parts of the walk uh, will just include me going to Starbucks and sitting and doing a, a podcast and having my first coffee other times it'll be including it'll include uh, being at Idito's and flirting with a, a pretty girl or talking to my friend Akim en Francais or uh, hanging out with the regulars and asking them how their shoulders are uh, and you know having a, a, a social life being part of a man in the world as opposed to a man in my apartment uh, when I have my apartment settled again which I was gonna do today but I think I'll work instead I can always go home and then get all my steps because I've got a treadmill desk I've got a, you know, I can do all those things. I can even reintegrate the 90 seconds swinging every hour into the rest of my day. Like, I don't have to uh, blow my entire wad on kettlebell swings during the five and a half hours of, of meandering. And these hours go by pretty quickly. It's already been uh, seven, eight, nine, two hours. And I might make this an early day because I feel the pressure of Dan this being his first day back from his entire summer being away at summer camp as a as a um, as a manager of a summer camp today is his first day back both for his son on his first day at high school Michael I think and uh, also for him his first day back at uh, Garris Corp but it's uh, this just uh, like having a dog uh, having a kettlebell that you take on walks around your neighborhood every day is a lifestyle choice, right? So that lifestyle choice is part of my intermittent diet. Uh, I take my Kindle paper white with me and read uh, the Washington Post every morning. I might start reading a novel. Uh, like I said, it's social hour. The only negative part is one of my new favorite people is named Natalia um, or Natalie. And she is a yogini, and a um, she is uh, a um, a goddess, and she is also a self-described she is a self-described alchemist, and she only gets chugging. Uh, afternoon like she is a uh, a night owl and I'm a morning person now so missing her means that when I return home uh, and uh, and shower 
uh, there's a great incentive for me to shower and then go back on the road with my with my laptop and so forth and make my way over to Idido's to enjoy the company of the afternoon crowd, the beautiful people of the après midi, après midi. Uh, so you know, it's good though because part of this is me getting out of my monasticism and my returning to a zest for life, right? Um, it's not hiding in a hidey hole. Uh, there's very little, any, there's nothing rigorous about this. Uh, I five and a half hours. It includes lots of weighted walking. Like I said, currently I'm 120 pounds overweight. So, uh, even if I didn't have this kettlebell to walk, I would be, uh, walking with, um, uh, with a, uh, with 50 kilos on me. So that's still 50 kilos is a lot of extra weight. So adding another uh, another 12 kilos is like, you know, is just, um, it's about, oh, it's about the following and I'll tell you in a second. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. My name is Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance or nice to see you again. So, there is. Hold on, let me see. Hey Google, who is the Greek uh, character who carried a cow? According to Wikipedia, Milo of Croton was a 6th century BC wrestler from the Magna Gratian city of Croton, who enjoyed a brilliant wrestling career and won many victories in the most important athletic festivals of ancient Greece. So his story... His story was that Milo, or Milo, was also said to have carried a bull on his shoulders and to have burst a band about his brow by simply inflating the veins of his temple. But it's even better. Um, the story is very funny. Uh, personal life, let's see. I think that it's not fair that they don't have him. Anyway, he was given a calf when he was a little, when he was young. And, um, and he carried the calf on his shoulder. Um, as it grew. And as it grew and became uh, heavier and heavier. Here we are. Milo was said to have achieved the feat of lifting the bull by starting in childhood, lifting and carrying a newborn calf, a newborn calf and repeating the feat daily as it grew to maturity. And um, this, by definition, is, uh, is what, uh, um, uh, hey Google, what is the theory of progressive weightlifting? According to Wikipedia, the principle of progressive overload suggests that the continual increase in the total workload during training sessions will stimulate muscle growth and strength gain. This improvement in overall performance will in turn allow the athlete to keep increasing the intensity of their training session. Hey Google, what is progressive overload? According to Healthline, progressive overload is when you gradually increase the weight, frequency, or number of repetitions in your strength training routine. Thank you. Well, so, so basically Milo uh, invented uh, progressive uh, overload training so that's cool and uh, when I was thinking about my friends who have children my friends who have children totally have wiggly uh, kettlebells they have their own calves they have their own calves that they have 
from newborns and they continually um, uh, wrestle, pick up, lift, carry on their shoulders, etc., progressively over the course of their lives until at some point, I assume at uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11, even daddy gets tired of, of carrying them or lifting them or, or whatnot. But still, even so, a mom and a dad, until the teenage world, still uh, physically interact with their child. And this is sort of also like what I've been missing in my life. I do not have children to wrestle around. And so taking my kettlebell on a walk for five and a half hours, always having to pick it up, lift it, put it down, set it down, set it down gently because, so it doesn't break a table or break a chair or, or startle anybody around me. Just needing to engage a 12 kilogram, which is nominal, and then a 16 kilogram, which uh, for all y'all, hey Google, how many pounds is 16 kilograms? 16 kilograms is 35.274 pounds. To convert from kilograms to pounds, multiply unit of mass by approximately 2.2. Hey Google, how many pounds is 20 kilograms? 20 kilograms is 44.092 pounds. Hey Google, how many, kilo how many pounds is 24 kilograms? 24 kilograms is 52.911 pounds. So traditionally 24 kilograms is 53 pounds. So uh, that's 50% of a lot of um, petite women, right? Uh, so by the time I'm schlepping that, I will be my own personal Milo. I don't think this bag can take a 32, maybe it'll take a 26 or 28 kilogram bell, but I don't know. We'll see uh, exactly when it starts coming apart and if I replace it with the same thing. But that will be my progressive overload. And uh, all y'all parents of young children don't need to do that because every day you are chasing around a wiggly kettlebell. You are picking up a wiggly kettlebell. You are swinging and amusing and shouldering and carrying and uh, everything, your own, little, your own little baby little kettlebell. You're doing exactly what I'm doing. Uh, for all y'all who have like decrepit dogs or uh, dogs with really short legs or um, uh, lap dogs, y'all, all y'all go ahead and carry those buggers around as well. Uh, I realized that I was always fit when I was a photographer because I was always carrying uh, 2.8 lenses. Uh, I was carrying uh, two bodies, uh, two, two Nikons, two SLRs. I was carrying lenses. I was carrying film. I was carrying used film. I was carrying a suite of uh, various and sundry filters. Uh, and all that other stuff. So I was, you know, always doing this. So this is my, uh, if you will, de facto replacement instead of camera gear, which would be readily crushed unless I got one of those sweet new uh, freaking cool like a monotone. I could put it into a, one of the side bags, the side uh, pockets. But other than that, I guess the only camera I have is my phone. So, uh, so... It's a complete lifestyle. Uh, carry my kettlebells uh, for five and a half hours uh, between social engagements, between coffees, between reading the newspaper, uh, between uh, flirting with girls, between uh, watching the pickle um, pickleball players, uh, listening to the cicadas, getting some sun. And then at the very end, I will reward myself with a one meal a day window of lunch which I guess will be my reward every day and I'll try to make that one meal a day be my new noontime uh, super meal and uh, that's how I plan to do it like I said completely flexible uh, flexible for weekends flexible for when clients need me etc 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 I'm actually gonna take that uh, 
that recurring thing off of Actually, I'm going to wait till I talk to Dan about it, and then, um, anyway, I will be right back with, uh, how to contact me and all that other fun stuff. Uh, let me know what you think about all this. You can contact me and all the things I'm going to mention in the next, uh, the next section, the next segment. Mahalo. See you in a second. Hey there, welcome back. This is the how to contact me section. First of all, I'll ask you to um, rate and review my podcast uh, called Chris Cast on whatever app you're using, whatever platform you're using. Also, uh, if you'll do it on Apple Podcasts, the only review is by me and I gave myself five stars, bitches. Um, also review it on Anchor. Uh, realize that Anchor is my main squeeze. Uh, and no, review it on Spotify, because I dare say that's who owns Anchor. If you want to support me, go to anchor.fm slash chrisabraham slash support. You can find my main HQ uh, at anchor.fm slash chrisabraham. My main HQ, my web presence is chrisabraham.com. You can find everything else there. Uh, you can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can call me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can text me at that number. You can signal me at that number. You can WhatsApp me at that number, and you can Telegram me at that number. If you call me and we don't have a date, a scheduled call, or I don't recognize your number, you will go to Google Voice and be transcribed and be emailed to me and we can make other arrangements. If you want a guaranteed call where I call you one minute early, you can go to calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 30 and make a call there. Um, uh, I'm at chrisabraham on Twitter, at chrisabraham on Facebook, at chrisabraham on YouTube, at chrisabraham on LinkedIn, at chrisabraham at, Chris Abraham at uh, Instagram, I'm uh, Abraham Chris J on, uh, what is that called? I just downloaded it and I don't ever use it. Uh, Snapchat and I am uh, Christopher Abraham on TikTok and I think that's it. I think that's it. Feel free to email me at chris at abraham.su. I'd really like to hear from you. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Mahalo and see you the next time. Bye-bye.